Hey, everybody, this is Sequel Centric, where we take a look at follow ups in the media to see how they stack up against their predecessor. I am Nate, and she's the boo boo kitty to my loudmouth Jay. Sandra. Yo. <laughs> Between the technical <laughs> difficulty on the live stream and whatever, whatever's going on. This is like the third attempt trying to record this thing. Third. Fourth. <laughs> lost count. We lost count. So, here we are, everybody. Better late than never. Take it away, Sandy. Uh, we would like to welcome our first timers as well as our tried and true regulars. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any new episodes or, God forbid, Stuffy's hot takes. If you're looking for some more sequel centric content, head on over to patreon.com slash sequel centric for a mere buck or a Washington or where else you want to call it. Dough, cabbage, uh, greenbacks. Moolah. Uh, you can act, yeah, moolah. <laughs> you can access around an extra 30 pieces of content right now, including the fireside chat on Netflix's Masters of the Universe Revelation, which is, in my opinion, the spiritual sequel to the 1980s cartoon, which Kevin Smith was also involved. Uh, we need to do this part two. Yes, we do. So, FYI. Speaking of Patreon, we here at Sequel Centric would like to thank our super and outrageous tier centrics for helping us grow this channel. Thank you, Marty, Eduardo, and Gabby. I would like to give a special shout out to a few people I, who I interact with throughout the week, like Jay and Silent Bob do in this movie. Uh, Jaime, Ch Chelsea, Lolly, Heidi, Juan, Josh, Enrique, Hector, Jose, Jason, Ernesto, Victor, Ari, Weston, and Michael, R.I.P. Since he he left this week. Um, to my other colleagues, I will shout you out on episode thirty-seven of Sequel Centric. He left or he died. He left. Okay, left. you said rest in peace. I'm like, did he die? Ah, well, you know, basically when uh, you know, trails. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Boom, 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 boom. You making a <laughs> reference to Three Amigos? Didn't you watch sure, it last night? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were making yes, a reference. I was, I was watching one of our favorite 80s movies. Yeah. Today is Sequel Centric's 50th video on YouTube, and we will be reviewing one of our faves, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. What is your history with uh, Jay and Silent Bob plus Kevin Smith? Well, it goes all the way back to his first movie, Clerks, uh, which only reason i saw that was because you rented it and i got sucked in so <laughs> so like monty python the holy grail yeah, yeah um i forgot why i rented it um i'm with you yeah going back to like 94 rented it for some reason don't remember why it's very unusual that a 1990s movie is in black and white but due to kevin smith working a very limited budget he opted for black and white and um after watching it, uh, connected with it, found out that Kevin Smith is basically my age, maybe a year older. Or so um, that's why every time he did one of these view askew movies, how they interconnect, I can relate because what was going on in my head, my thinking and my friends and this and that, whatever, it was the same thing was going on with Kevin. So that's why, you know, with this franchise, I really connect with connect with other franchises for different reasons like star wars or home alone or whatever right um but um i was intrigued about this one because you know the other movies jay and silent bob are either background characters like clerks are chasing amy or they're more up in the front um like side characters like in mall rats or dogma so I was intrigued on how these characters could hold uh, a movie as the main protagonists. Yeah. And I think they did a pretty good job, but we'll elaborate that in the pros and cons section. Yeah. So are you ready for some movie deets? Yes. Throw on the movie Mr. Deets. Mr. Deets. So Jay and Silent Bob strike back was released on august 24th 2001 Stuff, stuffy's birthday no 
Shh, quiet. She doesn't know that. I'm just trying to get her all riled Maybe up. She doesn't know that. It's her birthday. <laughs> Rated R with a running time of 104 minutes, and it's streaming on Hulu and Amazon right now with premium subscription. Director was Kevin Smith. It was written by Kevin Smith. Music was by James Venable. Produced by Scott Mosier. Budget of $22 million and box office returns of $33.8 million. Yeah, I was a little... I, I was a little shocked about... Let's just... Before I go, here's my first thoughts and impressions on the box office return. I was a little shocked doing research that uh, it only squeaked out, you know, almost twelve million dollars in profit. Yeah. Um, I thought it did at least fifty. I, I know, yeah. I knew it. Did, it wasn't going to do Marvel numbers or some other other movies. What they've done, like a hundred million, whatever. I mean, technically, it did make a little bit of a profit. Uh dogma but um i didn't think it was that little of a one but then again mall rats was a complete freaking bomb when it first came out but it's gained is, traction over the years which is amusing to me because i really liked that one over the first one yeah well you know we're we were teenagers during the 80s so i mean the mall scene up until recently was where you went you know Forget Amazon, forget UPS, and all the other stuff that delivered stuff, you know. You know, people, that teenagers during the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, you had to go to the mall. So I think that's why that movie speaks to, you know, our generation. Yeah. And the sequel to uh, Twilight of the Mall Ratch, I know I read Kevin Smith's writing it right now. So I'm very curious to know um how that is going to be because they do kind of show they kind of give you a little kevin smith gives you a little taste of the mall rat sequel and jay and silent bob reboot yeah at least that's the way i saw it right this is the fifth movie in the view askew universe and all the things you like about them and the other films are here and expanded on. Plus, this flick proves to me that Jay and Silent Bob are more than background or side characters in other movies. Yeah, I agree. I, re I agree with you on that. You know, this being the fifth movie was supposed to wrap up everything, tie it all together, and even technically close the book, which they literally did in the post-credit scenes with Atlanta Morissette playing, you know, God again. Um, so, but you know, not all like we've discussed not all side characters can have a successful movie you know once again i, I keep going back to the well of the first puss and boots movie didn't resonate with me but it's got six seasons of a show on netflix and it's coming out with a second uh coming out with a uh, another sequel movie uh the was it the last wish the last wish puss and boots the last wish something like something that, like that yeah. so and overall, my opinion means nothing. <laughs> Can we go into some pros and cons? Yes. Throw up the... Uh... <laughs> Whew, we're back. Hey. That was fun. You want to kick off the pros and cons or do you want me to? You can do it. Uh, my opinion, Jay and Silent Bob are part of a long time buddy comedy movie like Cheech and Chong, Bill and Ted, Wynn and Garth, and Harold and Kumar, which came after them. Um, they have, I think they have more in common with Bill and Ted and Harold and Kumar because, you know, they're kind of getting high, but not as bad, but I think uh, they're trying to get away from that with Bill and Ted and Wynn and Garth, where they were just kind of like airheads. But we're talking uh, a comedy duo movie, and antics ensue, so that's one of my pros. Yeah, uh, we have quite a few uh, pros for this one. Yeah, more so pros than should gone. Should we uh, just do a montage? Sure, of we'll our do, favorites. We'll do a yeah. Okay, so uh, one of the one of my favorites, and it's a pro for me. It's the song that Jay sings to the teenagers at the beginning of the movie. Uh, oh yeah, when the teenagers come up and they ask for a nickel bag. Yeah, and then. Jay just busts out in a song, you know, it's like 15 bucks, little man, put that in my hand. Right. If you don't, you owe me, owe me, owe. 
Right. Jungle love, and he busts into Morse Day in the time. So yeah. Yeah, you know, and there's that whole scenario with the kids, you know, mocking them, and you know, you, they suck. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay, so what was another one for you? Uh, the first cameo that we get. There's multiple cameos of multiple characters from the across the universe and directors and other uh, celebrities at the time, but. The first cameo was J uh, Dante and Randall, which kicked this whole thing off with the Clerks movie. So uh, I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, another one for me was Mark Mark Hamill as yes. Cockknocker. Yes. The, the sheer fact that he just popped up in the movie. Oh yeah. It was great. And but you know him being the uh, the comic book villain Cockknocker was hilarious, but. What was even more hilarious is um, they paused on him and they, they threw some words up. Hey, kids, it's Mark Hamill. A pause, you know. Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, going off of, you know, uh, famous Star Wars actors, uh, Carrie Fisher as the nun, uh, picking up Jane Silent Bob. And then uh, if you look closely, there's a little Buddy Christ figure uh, glued to the dashboard of her car. Yeah. Uh so George Carlin as the hobo. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I would like to believe that he plays the same character in Dogma as the Cardinal, and because what happened with Bartleby and Loki, and there was a yeah. complete massacre, he you know lost his position in the Catholic Church and he became a hobo. Right. Could be wrong, but you know it kind of fits nicely in fan fiction. Multiple cameos. Like I said, yeah. Yeah, you were just saying that. Um... Suzanne. Suzanne, the Suzanne story that was teased in Mallrats is yeah. finally explained. Yeah. That, uh, you know, it uh, it was good. I mean, kind of had to wait. But Kevin Smith always teased something. It took a couple of movies because if you read to the very end of the credits of Clerks, it does say the next movie is going to be Dogma, but that didn't happen for a while because Mallrats came after clerks then right. chasing amy came after mall rats and then finally dogma right but it was funny at the end of the credits of uh chasing amy it did say dogma no for really for real this time because <laughs> yeah. you know um kevin smith uh to coincide with the movie he really made up the website of movie poop shoot.com and <laughs> i didn't know about it but when we were uh, watching the movie Thought, just thought it was, you know, haha, -ha, chuckle, chuckle, you know. Right. Uh, you know, junior high humor, fart jokes and stuff like that. And But I know sometime after we saw the movie, I did look it up on the internet, which it was in 2001. You know all the kids that saw this. Oh, yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. But the fact that he came up with it and, and it was a real thing, it wasn't a in movie thing, it was reality out here. And it was, you know, the internet was still, I would say, kind of it in its infant stage a little bit in 2001. Yeah, yeah. So if Kevin Smith ever sees this, genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of, yeah. Liked how it was in the movie, but in reality. Uh, what's another one? Another pro. Um, another one is, uh, like in the Avengers Endgame, this movie ties together the four movies into one epic conclusion. Yep, I agree. Yep. And... Um, they squeezed in uh, Mubi and Buddy Christ. Uh, you know, that's kind of a, you know, another pro for me. Once again, there's yeah. something from every movie, you know, in this movie. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, uh, we get to see the dynamic duo in Clerks 2. And as a follow-up to this quirky movie. Yeah, it kind of shows you, like... Cause I'm sure most of us kind of thought at the end, well, at least I'll speak for myself. It's like, okay, it, that was the conclusion. You sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, I'll speak for myself right now. Uh, okay. It was, it's, it, you know, after the dust settles, like, you kind of wonder, it's like, you know, after that big thing, you know, what are they going to do? So when Clerks 2 was announced and it came out, not only does it go back to me liking Clerks so much, you know, it brings Jane Silent Bob because, you know, at this point, those four characters kind of go hand in hand, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it kind of lets you know what the, you know, 
sort of like how um spider-man no way home was yeah. the last movie after Endgame. you know right. like what was going on with him right so yeah like that yeah and uh i you have you have one that's a pro and a con yeah i have a pro and a con i um i don't yeah this this little transition I, i've noticed in the last couple of our movie reviews it's becoming more and more of a thing but the pro and the con is um after you know because of the characters it spawned uh an animated feature jane sound bob super groovy cartoon movie which is okay it, once again it leans into the blunt man and chronic and it's just it's like a it's like an adult saturday cartoon with uh you know fart and poop jokes and other stuff I watched it out of curiosity um if we're gonna do a quick podcast within a podcast i would just tell everybody unless you're a super duper Kevin Smith fan, you can completely ditch it. There's no, it doesn't tie into any of the other movies. It's just a, a spinoff offshoot, right. you know, and, uh, Jane Silent Bob reboot. So that's my pros and cons, a pro, okay. pro and a con. It's yeah. Fun. So as, as usual, we have a really short cons list. Yep. Partly because, you know, we're easily entertained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've established that on a few of our movie reviews. Yeah, but yeah. the bar's got to be really, really low, like Christmas, uh, a Christmas story too low. Yeah, or Christmas vacation too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the cons we have, I have, is the movie. The movie only pulled in eleven million dollars at the box office. Um. Which, you know, I really thought it would have done better. Yeah. Uh, but it has become a cult following, which has spawned its own sequel-like movie called Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few people, you know, some of the people I gave a special shout out to, they've uh, they've seen this movie, but they haven't seen the yeah. other movies. Right. So, um, and I'm going to I'm gonna do a quick slam on my buddy Victor. Like, I've been heavily trying to get him... To watch Clerks uh, over the last couple of weeks, and he keeps saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I keep making movie quotes and stuff, and he keeps blowing me off. But um, yeah, since I got my own show, I'm gonna I'm gonna be slap Victor there All right. about uh, watching Clerks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another um, con. It was uh, no Bartleby, no Loki, no Serendipity, no Rufus, none, not even Bethany, right. um, the last Scion. Um, once again, there was some representation of dogma, uh, because movies didn't show up until dogma and buddy Christ. But, um, I did another pro that I just thought of right here. Oh, um, his t-shirt, uh, because in the, the first movie, the singer, the Russian singer is technically, uh, was it Bob, silent Bob's cousin? berserker oh berserker yeah so so he's got the whole t-shirt because his whole he wanted to be a rocker so he had a a t-shirt like like we have our own t-shirt so yeah i thought that was a kind of sweet little nod to uh yeah. to the berserker song yeah from the first movie uh, yeah if you've watched these movies enough times you'll see the little the little easter eggs uh sprinkled throughout uh jay and silent bob strike back yeah you want to kick off the fun facts? Yeah, let's have some fun facts. Uh, my personal favorite on this one, uh, doing some research, I was looking for some fun facts. Uh, Will Ferrell, who plays Marshall Will and Holly in the film, which is an homage to the TV classic A Land of the Lost, ends up playing the main, the main character, Marshall, uh, in the 2009 theatrical release land of the lost which is currently uh on tubi so interesting yeah i mean <laughs> uh this one was it's, it's fun fact but it was a little bit of a shock because i thought the number would have been higher um, you thought it was i was shocked that it was <laughs> it was that high but maybe you're right maybe it should have been <laughs> so the f word was roughly used and you know, yet we say roughly 248 times well i got very i got throughout the movie i got different answers on the internet so yeah. i like this one the most yeah 
But uh, yeah, with the, just within the first, what, five, ten minutes alone with uh, Jay's mother saying the F word, Jay saying it as a baby, and then transition to Jay and Silent Bob right. saying in front of the quick stop, that, that's that got to be at least 36 times. Right. Maybe more. Yeah. I, I never, I always thought about, hey, the next time I watch it, I should keep a tally right. on how many times they say the F word. But right, yeah. It yeah. goes so that first five minutes, it, it it goes so quickly unless you have a tally whacker, like <laughs> like PJ. Yeah. Um, I I counter that you have in your hand and you push a button. That's called a tally whacker. Okay. Okay. Thanks for mansplaining. It. <laughs> no problem. I'm not just <laughs> mansplaining it to you. I'm mansplaining it to anybody that's watching us. You know that may not know what a tally whacker right. is. Got to whack that tally. Man's mansplaining it to our viewers. You got to whack that tally. <laughs> right, Justin? All right. Let's shout out to Justin. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, We're going to roll into our favorite movie yeah, quotes. Yeah. We kind of started it with the Venom uh, movie review, but yeah, we're officially starting it on this one. Uh, let's go with your favorite movie quote. The shift okay. back that we're kind of, we were kind of on the same level. Well, I had, a, I had two and that I could think of just, you know, off the top of my head. Yeah. And the first one we already we already kind of mentioned it was the little song rap that yeah that Jay does fork, at the beginning. Fork, fork, my mother fork, my mother fork. No, not well there's that one too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three. Uh but the other one is in towards the end of the movie and in the third act, I yeah. think, is when they're in the uh Blunt cave. Yeah, the, yeah, the blunt cave. Yeah, yeah. And blunt man and chronic they're, they're cave. Fighting yeah. co cockknockers. Yeah, yeah. And he he does exactly what his name says. And yeah, J yeah, Jay, <laughs> Jay says. Gets, why do you call? Me? Why do you call yourself cockknocker? And Mark. he left himself wide open. Oh yeah, literally yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark Hamill just kind of strolls on over. Funny thing, he should say, should say that, and then just. Nails him, and, and and as he's going down, he his his line is "Avenge me, have night." Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I love that. That was so hilarious. Um, yeah, my favorite quote is within the third act too. Once again, involving Mar uh, right around that. But when they were doing the laser sword scene, the lightsaber scene, and uh, Chris Rock is the director in this movie not Rufus, but still he, he plays such a great angry guy and oh he sees the lightsaber duel going on and he's like, he's like, damn, George Lucas is going to sue somebody. <laughs> but I think George Lucas yeah. is kind of okay with that. He, I mean, he even gave Mel Brooks his blessing for space ball. So right, yeah. if he's going to bless something that's really ripping on star Wars, I, I think he's okay with, with, Two things that are, you know, they look like, you know, bongs that have, you know, right, light shooting out the top. But yeah, that's right, a, yeah. that was a pretty, that was, I would say that's a good non Star Wars lightsaber duel scene, especially, yeah. uh, yeah, with him and, uh, Kevin Smith. And then he, uh, cock knocker hits Blunt Man back. And then the thing turns around and, and Jay's there as chronic and he's got the double sided, Bong lightsaber, <laughs> and what does he say? Call me Darth Bong. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, and he's. I mean, Jay thinks it's real, you know, not acting. He took it personal, right? Right. And then he's just he he's tapping into the dark side or what the the chronic side, right? And yeah. he's in. And, and Mark Hamill's like, can I get a cut here? Can I get a cut here? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I didn't sign up for this. I know. I'll be in my trailer. Yeah. <laughs> His hand gets cut off, and he looks straight. He breaks, does does a Deadpool, does a does, does a, a, a does a smoke in a banana. Yeah, just for, uh, uh, Ferris Bueller looks at the camera. Not again, you know. And if you're a Star Wars fan, it just you know, which, right. You know, we are. It just a lot of yeah. It it was extra humorous. Yeah. Um, I've already we're gonna this kind of rolled into our favorite scene, which I already said the the, the laser, laser sword fight. fight, the lightsaber fight with Mark Hamill, yeah. Hamill in the blunt cave. What's one of so your favorite scenes? Mine is, and I'll set the scene up for those that haven't seen the movie. And it, it, it's the part. It's in. It's probably about midway through the movie. There, they go 
it, they're in a uh, movies, which is I guess a knockoff of McDonald's yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And they're at the counter, you know, getting ready to order some food. And Jay turns around, and this hot chick comes, you know, walking in. They yeah. do the slow motion and everything. Shannon, and Shannon, Elizabeth, Shannon Elizabeth, right? Shannon Elizabeth, yeah. who plays a, a character called named Justice. She comes walking in, and just as Jay turns around, you know, sees her, he goes into this elaborate daydream of making out with him or with him with her <laughs> he's like, i'm making out with myself yeah you know he's yeah. he's in this elaborate daydream making out with with shannon elizabeth's character and uh it's playing to the music of one of my favorite songs from bon jovi bad medicine yeah perfect perfect song oh, for yeah. that situation i don't know any other that song was, yeah you know, and the scene ends with, you know, him having. Uh, at full attention. Full, yeah, he's at full <laughs> attention. And as, you know, you know, silent Bob you know, yeah. turns and sees this and he puts a cup over yeah. it and the music silence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and just a quick little follow up to that. It was like when Justice walks up and she says what's going on. She's like, oh, my God, you get free refills with that. <laughs> Which is just, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot you of, know. there's a lot of. A lot of great funny I mean, mo moments th throughout it. You could say it's like stupid humor, but you know, yeah, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's just fun. Yeah. Let's see. I guess since we've uh, done pros and cons, we've done some uh, favorite quotes and scenes. Let's uh, roll into does it sequel? Does it sequel? Go for it. Well, okay, I'll go first. Uh, for me, this movie does sequel in a big way. For me, uh, I believe this movie is the payoff of the other four movies. Yeah. And Jay and Silent Bob in this movie, they uh, prove that they're more than just background characters or side characters. They can hold their their own in a movie. Um, Sorry, but uh, yeah, they um, you're getting choked up. You know, <laughs> they were actually lost in place. That, they, they, um, I promised I wouldn't cry. <laughs> uh, plus, you know, um, they continue to entertain us in Clerks to, uh, you know, the groovy cartoon movie, which are voiced by Jason Hughes and uh, Kevin yeah. Smith. Uh, the reboot, which you know we might do. Uh, we might do a review on that um and of course the clerks three is uh, kevin smith is in the middle of editing it right now plus he's writing the script for the mall rats uh sequel twilight of the mall rats so once again you can't have some of these movies without jay and silent bob whether they're in the forefront like this movie this movie or dogma or just they're kind of in the background uh i mean Chasing Amy, they both had a very small part. It was kind of long, but it was so uh, pivotal and emotional, and and, and just, it hit home. You know, he, Jay always, sorry, not Jay, Simon Bob always has something interesting to say, you know, and I think originally when he, Kevin Smith did the Simon Bob character, he just didn't want any lines. But uh, the thing is, you know, towards the end of the movie or some crucial point, he will say something. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I can't wait to see Jay and Silent Bob in the upcoming, you know, Kevin Smith movie and expanding. I guess this is, we're going on to phase two, I guess, of the, okay, cool. well, I mean, yeah, yeah, Kevin, yeah, the Kevin Smith, the uh, USQ universe, I guess we're going in phase two. Um, but once again, yeah, he just, I think he was ahead of, his time whether it was a happy accident or he did it on purpose but i think kevin feige you know really solidified and came up with a formula that has proven to be a billion dollar yeah. uh, money maker right does it sequel for you i'm gonna follow your lead you pretty much said everything i was gonna say so we don't need to repeat it gotcha yes it does sequel for me uh it was again you know kind of 
surmises all of the other movies. So plus, if you want to watch a movie and you oh, really yeah. don't want to do that much thinking, it's 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 one of those ones. Oh you know? yeah, you know you can have it on in the background. Yeah, while you're do doing some cleaning chores. Yeah, yeah, get up. <laughs> uh, you know, make a quesadilla. Right. You know, or you know, Dutch baby or something, and just hear it in the background. Yeah, well, especially if you've seen it as many times as we have. We're talking about food. Okay. Well, <laughs> before we get lunch, let's uh, let's let's uh, put a verdict to it. On the sequel centric scale, is it a buy it, watch it, ditch it, or burn it? There you go. Watch it. Unless you're a complete Kevin Smith fan like we are, where we got all the movies, um, even the 10th anniversary Clerks, which has the alternate ending with Dante, uh, the alternate, ten, the 10th anniversary of Mall Rats, where it has the director's cut, which is that version is almost a completely different version of Mall Rats. Right. If, um, if you're if you're hungry for some mall rat stuff, go out and look for the tenth anniversary. You'll have the director's cut. Um, uh, and um, yeah, that's about it. Unless you're yeah, yeah watch it. Unless you're a complete nut Definitely. like we are. Yep, watch it. Okay. So uh, next movie review for the month of May is going to be. Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That's right, Stuffy. It's a Star Wars movie. You got that right. <laughs> she, it she, might, she might have some hot takes on that one. What do you think? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My brother said if I didn't have anything to say nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> this one was chosen by our... By, by ours. <laughs> this one was chosen by Marty for being at the Outrageous Tier. Yeah. Well, she... So. she she told me what movie she wanted, which is this one, and a lot of people deem May as Star Wars month between Star Wars starting on the twenty fifth of May, but we really most of us celebrate it on May the fourth for you know May the fourth be with you. So I decided to take her movie review, put it in May, and then that gave us an opportunity to do this uh, great movie that we just spoke about. Yeah, uh, we here at Sequel Centric are still working on the next Patreon episode uh, called Sequels To Be or Not To Be. Uh, Sandy and I have a wish list each of some sequel movies that we would like to see, but probably won't see the light of day. Maybe there's one or two that might see the light of day, but you got to head on over to Patreon uh, when it drops. We'll let you know when it does drop, but that's what we're working on right now. And we still haven't forgotten about Stump the Chump. Uh, we have so many projects going on. Um, so it's... many projects, so little time. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, we might uh, slice out the uh, Stump the Chomp mini episode from the February's tidbits and then drop that. So that way you don't have to go searching for it. Because that was that little mini preview that we did was really great. And the one movie that you thought I was going to get for sure kind of stumped me. I had to get, I had, yeah, had to ask for the description. So you did stump me on that one. Yeah. The one you thought you were going to stump me on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to, so that, that, so those are the next couple of projects going on. So um, thank you for uh, subbing and subscribing and the supporting Patreon us. and supporting us. We thank you very much. Um, we're trying to get as much done as, as little time as possible. And uh, we, you know, done some upgrades and stuff, so things are running a little bit smoother. But every once in a while, we still have a hiccup, so that's why we're recording this episode and not doing a live stream like we normally do. We here at Sequel Centric are still working on the next Patreon episode called Sequels To Be or Not To Be. Sandy and I have a wish list each uh, of sequel movies we would like to see, but probably won't see the light of day. Um, we still haven't forgotten about the Stump to Chomp episode, but we got so many projects going on so many projects so little time but we still haven't forgotten uh hopefully in the next month or two we might slice out the preview from tidbits and put it up in the next couple of weeks seagull centric is only seven subs away from 86 i want to get kicked to the curb <laughs> 
And if we can get those seven subs in the next 37 days, I will buzz the Neanderthal's head with some sheep's ears on a live stream. Don't disappoint us. And until next time, ask yourself this one question. Does it sequel? Bye.